This video is brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For grips and accessories, visit slateblackindustries.com. The AKS use a very unique example of a firearm. Even when suppressed, the entire package is still shorter than an AK-100 series, which is based off of an AK-74M. Now, that comes with its drawbacks, of course. You're, you're running half of the barrel length, which translates to more difficulties in pushing higher velocity. Now, outside of bucking wind, that lack of velocity also translates to a lower energy transfer onto your target, which you are going to see on the impacts for these targets. This crink is a six to seven inch gun. So it's better with a suppressor, Josh. Our right? expectations are going to be managed accordingly. Quite 150 here. Impact. Impact. Excellent. All right, target number two. Give it to him. Impact. Same spot. Target number three. Give it to him. Impact. Impact. All right, I'm on the gong. Uh, that was high. Left, right looked fine. Impact. Impact. Okay. This gotcha. should be target number five, 350. Just underneath him, maybe just a touch to the left. Impact. Impact. Whoa, okay. All right, send it. Oh God, I said send it. High to the right. Uh, about, about just short. Good windage. Just off the left edge, that's the elevation. We got a wind gust coming in now. Just underneath him on the right edge. Just off the right side. Okay, those are all the same holds. So this is, again, we're reaching that 300 meter point where- um, It's a bit more, right? 350 meters. Three, uh, 350 meters, yeah, but like past that 300 meter point where the crank starts to lose gas. Right, okay. It was exactly the same when we did the iron sights, remember? Off the left, off the right, off the left, maybe a hit, maybe just low. So I'm going to show you a spotting technique to help you comprehend some of those hits that you're going to see, if this were the target. Let's have it right here, and it's, do you see it moving right now? Maybe, maybe not, maybe just slightly, but what you, do, what you do see is the shadow. Now observe the shadow. You can see the shadow moving a lot easier than you could see the target move. I want you to do the same thing when you're watching this, this uh, video. Because of the lack of energy transferred onto the target, you're going to have to observe the shadow and the target at the same time and a lot of times you'll be able to see the target move through the movement of the shadow. Just low. Just right. Way left, full target left. 
Target right, slightly low. Just on the bottom right edge. Bottom left edge. Are you ready for it? Watch the shadow. Impact. Off the right by a half a target. I think that there's probably another hit that took place in that string. You think we should just move on? I, I'm i pretty confident that you got a hit in there. Okay. I, I'll tell you this, like, those were all the same holds. So you see that dispersion going on around there? That was the exact same hold. Yuck. Okay. I'm on at 450. This is the base of the flagpole, yeah? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Shoot, dude. I, these are right in there. I just can't. It's not. It's either not moving the target. I. Those might have been hits. Nope, that's a real hit. Okay, I see. High. Slightly right. Just off the right edge. Just off the right edge. Don't know. Let's go. I came off the optic. Stand by. Let's try the 500, dude. I would say that regardless of what's happening, Ooh. like that that one hit was an obvious hit. It's possible that there there might be some hits in here, but there's just so hard to see. Man, Josh, this mag is hairy. Yeah. It just dribbled around out. Yeah, that's one of the things that I've actually noticed about that one. Okay, we'll talk about that later, but we have two more rounds left. All right, let's see what you can do at the 500. Impact. Impact. Huh. All right, so, but what does this tell us though? Real quick, last few rounds, it's entirely possible that I was missing some of the impacts on that 350 and 400. I, I mean, can see the rounds coming in, but and I didn't see any splash, but man, that's so hard because it's like the, there's very, very, very little energy left in the yeah. round at that distance. It should be, actually, it should be a course clear at 500, right? I mean, we definitely got it to 500. I don't know about the 450 and the 400 yard impacts. I know you got one at least on both of them. We'll check it on post because if the 350 indeed was an impact after impact that we couldn't really spot yeah. the hits, I think there should be a consideration definitely, of course, for that. But. Um, there's going to be a lot of conversation we could have about this because it is just such a different loadout and the Russians do have similar setups to this, believe it or not, N not with a 4X, but more so with like a red dot or something. Um, so let's talk about this in the debrief. Привет, товарищ. <laughs> this is one of the most ridiculous things we've done, isn't it? I is this like, I mean, it's still nowhere close to AK-50 level, but it's still pretty ridiculous. Ah, uh, this is pretty stupid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is something that you would see from a video game. Right. The video game. The only one that matters. Which, okay, this is not the ACOG. That we, we shot actually, it with, Yes, right? we actually disassembled that one. Yes, that's well, been we, scavenged for another project. And, yes, unfortunately, that is lost in a loot. <laughs> uh, so the, the original ACOG was... Um, that was the ACSS ACOG. Yep. So that was specifically to address our previous video with a crank because the iron sights were extremely difficult to use. Right. Inshallah, I cleared it at 500. Well, wait, wait. for those who haven't seen the run, you should go back and watch the suffer fest that that <laughs> was. Um, when Henry says he cleared 500, what he means is that we failed the course miserably and then he just decided to pop around at 500 and hit the target. Yes. Uh, so, so can can it <laughs> can it put a projectile at five hundred with the the sights? original configuration? Impact. Not what? kidding. I mean, I mean, yes, of course, my friend. Yes. Answer is yes. It can land it that area, but whether you hit it or not mm -hmm. is you know God it's definitely willing. not repeatable, yes. right? So, in since that point in time, we've evaluated the firearm's raw accuracy potential, right? Mm -hmm. And what we saw was it was grouping at like six and a half inches, right, for nine shots. Yeah. Really, really bad. Not 
not necessarily out of the realm of what we anticipated, but what we wanted to do for this run was to see if we could add some things and change some things around in such a manner that it would allow us to gain a bit of advantage and take it back out on the course and see if we could do any better. Right. So the first you already mentioned, we added the ACOG, gave right. us a graduated aiming with a magnified optic, see the target better, call the hits better, observe the impact better, and have the graduated aiming to know exactly where to, to be putting the running call. Right. Now, it's long known that suppressors have an effect on accuracy. And so I wanted to test it with the OSS can, and specifically the OSS because of AKs being the gassing fairly right. overgassed. I mean, if I dropped like a regular, you know, uh, 30 cal suppressor right. on it, it would rock your world. Mm. So using the OSS was specific because I actually use that on my AI as well, um, and it, it has no point of impact shift, but it does tighten up the groups mm. um, quite a bit. So. Um, Wanted to see if it would tighten up the groups, and it actually did. So you got the groups from about six and a half ish down Two, to five. <laughs> now that still sucks, but that's a material improvement. Yeah, and it took us from you know what was like a thirty plus inch grouping at five hundred, <laughs> uh, based on the raw paper accuracy, right. down to like somewhere in the twenty five inch. Yeah. Range. Yeah. It's basically if you're looking at statistical terms, it increases your chances of hitting it if you hold the same hold. Which right. that's the only way you could do this. And if you rewatch some of the footage, you'll see me. You know, Josh will go like, "It's on the left. It's on the right. It's on the left. It's on the right. It's above." I'm actually not aiming to the left and to the right of these. You're just holding the same hold and taking right. the shot. So basically, it's a numbers game at that point. I'm I'm figuring out the the cone of fire where it's dropping the rounds and that's sort of in the range in the realm of where i want it so i continue to drill that dot until it hits yep it's a numbers game at that yep. point yep so we basically got the firearm in to what we thought was the best possible configuration for us to gain the accuracy needed to try the course listen comrade this is krinkov sniper if you want to do very much damage and have a small package, ah, this is really nice for you, huh? It increased our sighting capacity and increased our um, harmonics, our, our, our barrel performance. But what we could not do is give it more barrel. <laughs> <laughs> so that results in the same projectile being shot through the same barrel and having the same issues with respect to the terminal effect on target. Right. Which, granted, we're just seeing if we can hit the thing. It's not like we're, we're shooting. Okay. We're so just seeing if we can hit it. Josh, that brings up, like, that, that's gonna, that, this is like a huge yeah, hornet's the worm? nest. Because Open Pandora's box. Then you're going to have people saying, oh, well, you know, I wouldn't worry even if I get struck by a 545 bullet at 300. Or, if, were you saying that you wouldn't, you would want to stand down range? Like, Look, I, I, <laughs> people have died from being shot by BB guns. If, if this is something that you want to take a calculated risk on for whatever activities you are participating in, great. For me... Not, not, not within my realm of risk that I would take for normal activities. So, if someone is shooting a crink at me at 500, would you take cover? Of course. Yes. Yes, I very much would. Of course. It's a projectile. <laughs> but what it doesn't change is how seeing the effect on target, even though I'm literally watching the round go out mm -hmm. and hit right in on the target area... It still doesn't change that it's very hard to call these hits in certain instances. Some of them you can see a bit more flex in the plate, but right. man, it's not. It, uh, no, it's there is difficult. not much going on on the target with so, these. In the field, it is drastically more difficult to call hits on the target to begin with. I have the luxury going into post production and slowly going frame by frame by frame to watch. And in fact, I think it was a 450 yard target where there was actually a hit and you distinctly said, I don't know if that's a hit. Mm -hmm. But no, if no. you don't look at the target and you look at the, the shadow on the ground, mm -hmm. you see it flexing ever so slightly. And in other, in other instances, when we're shooting at a 5.56 or whatever, it, it just it moves the target, no, no issue. Right. So 
Yeah, full barrel lead guns. Right. Yeah. So I think the 350 or 400, we basically said, ah, we've been on this for a while. Let's see if we you know, can go to if the it rest, were a yeah. missed call. And and then the next one, basically we shot a minus one on one target and a and plus one on, on the, the 450, other. Yeah. So Josh, if we were to determine on whether this cleared or a conditional clear or not, mm -hmm. I would be inclined to saying that it is a clear. Like, it I is mean, yeah, if you miss at 400, but you collect the extra hit at 450, and it all comes down to we really couldn't tell through the camera whether or not they were impacts or not. Yeah. Uh, you know, I will bestow the gift of, of giving <laughs> that as a clear to the Tarkov crank. At, at a 40-round clear. Yeah. Which is still a clear. It is. Was it actually right on 40? Right on 40. Classic. Now, the magazine. The coffin mag. <laughs> the 40-round coffin mag. 60. I think oh, it's, it's a 60? 60. Yeah, it's a 60 round coffin mag. Cool. Oh, okay. I think. Right? I think it's a 60. So that actually goes with the uh, the Crink's historical employment because back then, soldiers using it as a PDW, they would duct tape or packy tape two 30 rounds together mm. um, to basically like tankers or whatever or Have a single package with. Uh, a yep. bit of enhanced firepower. Yep. Yeah. I mean, think of uh, basically like a P90 with one reload. Yeah. Right? Um, so if you have a 60 round coffin mag, that actually makes sense for a crink. That being said, if that were the case, I would use a, like a micro dot on the sight bridge right here and be able to fold the stock and, of course, not use a suppressor. Um, but I think that that should be taken into context that this was designed in substitution of a submachine gun or a PDW, or, or as a PDW per se. So not necessarily that I want to tag someone at 500 yards, but zero to three getting somewhat effective hits. On and you know what we saw last time with the irons, and then again this time, is that within the context of those ranges, mm -hmm. this is actually a very capable package for what you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. You know? But I would say the coffin mag, I would surmise that we don't see it as often because as your experience with these coffin mags, they look super cool. Yeah. But in it, practice. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a not cheap, it's very expensive, but I've just, we've not had great reliability success with this. We have one of them. So yeah. like with this particular mag, um, kind of like the follower getting hung up during this, the stepping up process mm -hmm. when it goes from quad stack down to um, double stack. If not too dissimilar, I might add, to issues that I've seen on some of the Surefire quad stack mm. mags over the years. You know, I don't know what the new generations are like, but I have had some of those that malfunctioned under similar circumstances. So that's the Tarkov AKSU. I feel like these are one of those weapons that we could talk forever or just end at this point because, quite frankly, I mean, it's ready to drop back onto the classic and for us to finish the classic review on it. And that's probably where we should pick up the conversation. Yeah. So, yes. uh, steer clear of those scav bosses, gentlemen. <laughs> we'll see you on the range. Subscribe to our newsletter at slateblackindustries.com where you can get updates on Nine Hole Review publications and access the Practical Accuracy Scoreboard to help you argue with people on the internet on which rifle performs better on the Practical Accuracy course. We maintain this newsletter to be majority gun content with Nine Hole Review's updates per every email with less than 33% marketing content. Subscribe today on slateblackindustries.com. Seven one six is zero nine six four Vic eight packs red con one green to green top copy over. Zero nine six this is seven one six Roger over. One six zero nine one one pack green green over. Seven one six Roger over. One six zero nine two one Victor two packs red con one over.